Moving on now to the retail market snapshot from a tenant perspective, we'll have the leasing trends, the large format overview, the shopping center overview, and then the CBD, and then we'll have a tenant perspective at the end. Okay, thanks, Ed. So looking across our retail markets, vacancy has decreased in large format retail. Um, that's largely due to low levels of new stock. Our other retail markets have seen vacancy remain static. However, as highlighted in our newsflash articles, there are disparities in this vacancy, particularly in strip retail, where we've seen some locations struggling with high vacancy, whereas other markets are quite tight. Despite a slump in retail spending with households tightening their belts, we are still seeing upward pressure on effective rents, uh, effective rents with rents up and incentives down across most of those retail markets. Some small relief for retailers is we are seeing CPI figures ease from the 7 to 8% we were seeing in some capital city markets last year, down to 3 to 4%. Over to Adrian. Thanks, Gillian. So as Ken highlighted, the barometers within the office market, the lease norms for retail remain uh, uh, unfriendly due to the supply side power and market coverage that landlords hold as a collective over retail tenants, as well as restrictions within retail leasing acts. With the market conditions, they are quite varied over the different types of retail. In theory, they should favour the tenant. However, landlords are not taking into consideration the needs of tenants in light of the current economic conditions. As an example, with the retail market experiencing difficulty due to inflation and interest rates, many landlords are trying to increase the guarantees on tenants to reduce the landlord's risk. The landlords are concerned with the tenant not being able to pay the rent. Perhaps they should consider that the less money tied up in bank guarantees or security deposits could allow tenants to invest more into their business, whether that be towards rent, marketing, wages, or fit out improvements. Unfortunately, due to the fragmentation of retailers, the shopping centre landlords especially are unwilling to negotiate and the tenants therefore placed in a difficult position to either accept the terms offered or potentially have to vacate and lose their business. Next slide. So with the large format retail, the economy is continuing to have an effect with the electronics, footwear and furniture sectors especially showing negative inflation. The outlook is that retail sales will be slow in the first half of 24, have with population growth and then tax, coming, tax, cuts, tax cuts coming into effect in July. The outlook for the later part of the year is more positive. The lack of new property space in large format retail is forcing rents to increase with limited opportunities for new and relocation sites. However, for some tenants, the rent increases along with the hiking construction costs is making new sites quite difficult to justify. Landlords are continuing to resist incentives on new sites and incentives on renewals are almost non-existent given the increased cost of borrowing money for landlords. Time and skill is required to achieve results in this area. Currently, our large format clients are looking at existing sites from a portfolio perspective with careful consideration and decision-making based on informed data to either remain in situ or relocate to a superior location, especially given fit-out costs the reduced amounts of capex available and the need to maximise store sales productivity given the lack of new floor space available. These strategies always have an end in mind to provide the greatest return for both the individual stores and the portfolio in general. So the next slide. Um, the rate of inflation is influencing how customers shop in shopping centres with a reduction of spend on non-essential products, researching product pricing, and an increased awareness of sales, cheaper products, brands, and stores. Shoppers are almost uh, also more purposeful with their shopping. So having the right experience, products, and staff are more important than ever to ensure healthy sales conversions. So you might uh, be surprised at the picture that we've got there on the right, but um, retail trade figures in February saw a 0.3% year-on-year growth um, on the back of the Taylor Swift effect. Uh, however, in the latest figures released for March, uh, they saw a 0.4 year-on-year decline with household budgets tightening again, especially in the clothing, footwear, household goods and department store products. As with large format retail, there is no silver bullet for recovery in the short term for retailers and in until interest rates reduce in the, in the mid-year stage three tax cuts. Shopping centre landlords are still seeking rent increases on renewal by 10 to 20%, along with longer ter lease terms and fit-out upgrades. 
Many tenants in larger shopping centres continue to be affected by relocations on renewal as the landlords revisit tenancy mixes and seek international tenants to maximise turnover and rental growth. As we discussed with large, large format retail, landlords are only providing incentives on new sites and even then the amounts are reduced or reflected within a higher face rental. With the CBD and fringe, retail rents have remained stable over the past quarter due to the effective interest rates and reduced discretionary spending. However, the CBD will more likely never return to pre-COVID levels due to the change in office working habits. Retailers that depend on office workers, for example, small to medium food tenants within a foyer or precinct within an office building where there have been low visitation or higher vacancy, residents or overseas, overseas tourists are continuing to struggle to survive. In the su suburban market, the market is two-paced. In the busy prime suburban streets like a Glenfrey Road Hawthorne um, or a Boundary Road in, in West End in Brisbane, vacancies are rare, rents are increasing and new opportunities are mainly sourced off market. However, in the secondary locations, there are many options available. However, landlords are still hesitant to provide generous, generous incentives given most to smaller investors. We're also noticing that tenants are much more considered in their decision-making. Prior to COVID, retail tenants may have taken a site even if it wasn't in their preferred location as they're back in their brand and economic conditions to make the site work. Now tenants are prepared to wait for the ideal site that tick all their boxes to ensure that their business has the best opportunity to be successful. Landlords still need to continue to be reasonable, provide flexibility and recognise the current pressures on retailers. Last month, we experienced a landlord who was proposing a retail rent across a 250 square metre outdoor space with no roof, no walls, which in reality should have had no rent attributed to it. The food tenant in this situation is now forced to vacate a successful business of more than 10 years due to the landlord requesting unreasonable and unjustified terms. Uh, looking at the tenant perspective, there are a number of strategies that the tenant can enact to, in, uh, to receive favourable outcomes within the retail sector, and we've highlighted two here. The first, premises due diligence and negotiation. As we discussed earlier, considered decision-making is required to ensure that new sites tick all the boxes and you get the outcome that your business requires. If your landlord is not prepared to share the, in the risk of the lease, then that may be a warning sign to look elsewhere or engage an expert to, to negotiate your, on your behalf. And then also lease restructure before expiry. Time is your leverage, go early. Um, speak with other tenants in your shopping strip to find out how, how their business is, is going, what they're paying, incentives received. Look at alternatives and do it early so you do have an option or your option is your backup plan. Negotiating early or before your option is due to be exercised allows you to renegotiate your lease and look for opportunities to transfer risk, such as removing personal guarantees or adding additional option terms.